Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today, I'm very excited to bring you our most recent volunteer success. Uh, we have finally reactivated the ship's air search radar antenna. For those of you who've been watching this uh, channel for a while, you'll know that we've been working on this project for roughly two years at this point. Uh, and in the last year, we've had so few wins um, as a museum, as a humanity. Uh, I, I am proud to uh, bring you this victory that our volunteers have been able to pull off. Battleship New Jersey came uh, to New Jersey without any radar antenna on board at all. Uh, it had been removed to use on other Navy ships, along with a ton of other equipment. Uh, much of the equipment in this space likely uh, was not here when we first started. So one of the early projects that the museum had was to uh, correct the ship's silhouette by acquiring an SPS-49 radar antenna. So uh, they, they went to the contractor, which I believe is a company down in Florida that, that manufactured these antennas, and the contractor said, hey, we can give you a, a working one, or uh, we'll, we'll charge you a lot less to just take uh, one that, that's uh, not working and only bits and pieces. So the museum was unable to scrounge up the money to get a working one. Why the heck would we need that? Uh, and so we bought one that didn't work. And so for the last 20 years, the story has always been that it would be impossible to rotate this antenna. Now, other museum ships like the aircraft carrier Midway or the battleship Massachusetts have rotating uh, radar antennas, and uh, it looks very compelling, makes the ship look alive again. So obviously it's something that we wanted to do, but uh, we, we didn't have the technical capabilities in-house. Fortunately, some of our volunteers did. Today we're on the O13 level, the platform above the superstructure where our radar antennas are located. Over here is our Spot 10 surface search radar. And behind that, their SPS-49 air search radar. When the battleship first came here as a museum, the antenna was not in place. We couldn't fit under the Walt Whitman Bridge with it there. After the museum opened, this antenna was lifted on by helicopter. The work crew bolted it on to the lower platform here. Inside of this port that we've opened up is where the planetary ring is that rotates. This is the rotational motor, which we're going to remove and have rewound to restore rotation. When the Navy demilled this radar set, they welded pads on this side and on the other side to keep it from moving. The back face of the radar is the mechanism that allows it to rotate to find the height of objects. So this space on the port side of the O5 level of the forward superstructure is the radar equipment room, specifically for the SPS-49. Uh, wh whatever was in here during earlier commissions was gutted out to put the control equipment for this radar. Uh, the space is partially dominated by this air handler unit, part of our uh, air conditioning system. So that takes up about half of the space and shows you how important cooling was to this uh, equipment. Behind me you see multiple racks and there are a couple more around the corner. Uh, and that's what would have held all the equipment for radiating and rotating and elevating and all the other functions that this radar could perform. Uh, and when the ship was decommissioned, part of the demil demilitarizing process was for the Navy to go through and absolutely gut all that equipment. And they gutted every single cabinet except this one right here where, where you see something hanging down and all sorts of stuff. There's a light fixture in front of it, and the cabinet wouldn't pull out without removing 
the light fixture. Fortunately for us, nobody went through the trouble of doing that, and the cabinet was left intact. That is the cabinet that controlled the rotation. So we were able to reconnect some of the uh, wires, and it looks like they took just a chainsaw and chopped through a bunch of the wires, uh, but we were able to go through and reconnect those, and um, that allowed us to restore one of the functions of the radar, the, the one that's visually exciting, thankfully. There were a number of other issues we discovered. Uh, the first thing we did was we rewound the motor. So we had to take the motor off of the radar, this is all the way up on the platform, and lower it, I would guess it's around 200 pounds, uh, down to the deck, send it off to be rewound, because at best it hadn't been rotated in uh, 20 years. Uh, Anyway, we get it back up there and plug it in, and we spend a lot of time wiring it up because all those wires are cut as well. And the radar up there doesn't have any wires of its own, so we had to put new wires from the motor to where the old wires had been cut. And uh, it still didn't work. Uh, so there was a missing piece called a quill shaft between that motor uh, and the, the actual drive shaft for the radar uh, that we had to buy or make. And it seems like that was the only piece missing that uh, would allow the thing to, to rotate. Uh, and the piece cost a couple hundred bucks, but we were able to find a machinist who volunteered to make it, and we were able to find uh, more volunteers who were able to track down the blueprints for the piece so that we could make an accurate uh, representation of the missing piece that, that was functional. So with that done, our volunteers have just been wiring up the process. Uh, we turned it on from a button up on the platform to prove it could work at that point. And then since then, they've been wiring it up down through here. The pandemic obviously has slowed us down. We haven't been allowing volunteers on board for a while. So some of our volunteers actually took their work home with them uh, and, and have been working on it during the pandemic. This is an air search radar console. Above it is one of the few places on the ship where you can control the S40, SPS-49 from. It's got all sorts of functions, uh, but for our use, all we can do with it and all we want to do with it is make it spin. Uh, we don't want it radiating and, and actually detecting objects. We would probably do horrible things to all the electronics in the Camden, Philadelphia area if we started radiating from our radar antenna. So it's got a selector switch for the radar equipment room or CIC. Of course, Iowa class battleships have both the CIC and a CEC, which other ships don't have. They just use the standard console. Uh, so we've got the radar equipment room, which and uh, CIC, which is just the stand-in for CEC, which of course is where you would be controlling it from today. And then there's an in initiate button to actually start it up. While we are at a point where we can control the radar from CEC where it is supposed to be controlled from, uh, the project is far from being finished. Uh, we, we want to add a number of other bells and whistles to it, so don't be surprised if you come out and it's not rotating. That probably means we've got it shut down to work on it, and there's easily six months or a year's worth of other work to uh, get this going. Temperature sensors wired up so that we can tell if the thing's overheating, uh, other things like uh, a timer so that the thing will shut off automatically uh, if so we don't forget to turn off the button at the end of the night uh, and maybe even a timer that will make it only run a couple of revolutions every uh, every few minutes or for a set time every hour so that we're not burning this thing up. Newer versions of the SPS 49 are still in the Navy inventory and are still in use so there is the potential to find people who worked on this and uh, parts out there, but because they're parts for active duty Navy ships, uh, they are more expensive than what the museum could pay for. So we are absolutely indebted to our volunteers who have donated time and money to this project to uh, be able to get it to this point. So there you see it. As of May 1st, 2021, our volunteers have restored the ship's SPS-49 air search radar to be able to rotate at the original six revolutions per minute it was designed to operate on. 
the SPS-49 is still in use and can track aerial targets up to 250 miles away and can track roughly 40 uh, targets at once. Large ships in the U.S. Navy are still equipped with a updated but similar system. Special thanks to the ship's uh, radio club, the uh, maintenance department, and of course the curatorial department that helped with this project. If you would like to come out and volunteer on cool projects like this one, there's a link in the description for ways you can sign up. What feature do you think would do the most good to make the ship seem alive again? We've got the horn working now. <laughs> and the ship's radar, what else would it take? Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, and also from a number of other businesses and private citizens like yourselves. Uh, in particular, in the last year, donations from viewers like you have allowed us to go from making one video a week to making multiple videos a week, which makes this YouTube channel a larger part of our job. Thank you so much for your support. If you would like to continue to support us, there's a link in the description below. And as always, remember to like, share, and subscribe so that you're notified when new content like this goes live. Thanks for watching.